All right, power windows, let's take a look. Power windows can be used to help you out and fix up things that might not have been exactly right when you were capturing the image. This was seen in the previous video, and as mentioned, power windows were used to improve this shot. I just wanna show you different ways to use power windows. For example, if you wanted something behind the actor all the way down to just adding a vignette. So first and foremost, this is your power window area. You have a couple different options. This is a square, this is a circle. You can do more than one. You can draw. If you click and drag, it can curve. You also have a gradient. So I'm gonna make a new version and just kind of go through a couple of these and then all the things that you might experience when using power windows, how to get it on the background and track to the background behind a person, but without having that person influence the tracking data and a bunch of other things that we can do here to improve the image, to go from something like this to this. She's kind of daydreaming, waiting for the coffee to be made to try to enhance that moment and make that feel more like she's in her own mind. I would say that I would want kind of like a bright area around here. And already that is kind of happening. Like it's a little darker around the edges, but let's make it more. So the first thing that I would do is put this power window on. I can hit Shift H to see what's happening. I'm going to invert this, drag it out, feather this out a little bit. So I'll hit Shift H again. Also, all this stuff is happening before the look. So one other thing I did was to record this as bright as possible. This is what it was like with just the look on it. And then this is the exposure brought down. The reason for that is so that when I wanna bring up this area or bring up these coffee beans, the information is there and allows me to bring up certain areas without them being noisy or looking weird because I recorded as bright as I possibly could. So back to our vignette, this will be the start of making this look right. When I'm moving quick, I kind of just do it in the offset and I think that's okay, but you can also do it with mapped HDR wheels because if you don't know, mapping the HDR wheels changes exposure. So I'm gonna turn off the view of the power window and just bring this down. Feather this more and we have this. And now since it's about her, I'm gonna add another power window and I'm gonna do it in parallel node. So I hit option P so that we're working off of the same image and not just on top of each power window. I will kind of just shape this to her. With something like this, I don't wanna hit the background. If it's like this, it's gonna look like there's a halo around her and that's not good. I just wanna bring her up a tiny bit. I'm not gonna map this again, I'll just do it in the gain, which might sound weird, but gives me good results. Maybe I'll feather this out and I'll make it a little bit smaller. Just bring her up a little bit, and then I'm gonna track this, hit forward and back. Does it look like a halo around her? No, it doesn't, and we see that she is brought up a little bit. If there is a halo around, you can kind of draw around, and I'm not going to the edges, and then soften the outside, and then track it. So let's see what these coffee beans look like. For this one, I'm going to draw. Since this is small, I'll turn this off, and I'll bring up the gain, bring down the lift. So we have coffee beans brought up. That's probably too much, just a little bit. And then I will soften this, but I will soften it with it off. Just a little bit of the coffee beans more visible. And then of course we will need to track this. This is just similar to the coffee beans feathered just to bring down this area a little bit. Okay, we'll take a look at one more clip for how you deal with getting stuff behind the talent. So here we have this shot where we have things that were done with power windows, this right here. We can also see how bright this was exposed again so that I have room to bring this stuff up. So I'll get us to a spot right here, new parallel node, option P, and I'm going to select the square, which I like because you can very easily adjust the feathering of one side or the other. So maybe something like this and we'll put it right here, so I want it to go behind her. And then I will bring up the gains. Let's see, that's close. This seems warmer than this, so I might just cool it off a little bit. Something like that kind of works. Soft one is the left, soft two is the top, soft three is the right side. So I'm gonna soften that out kind of so it looks like this, and then the top and the bottom will need some more soft. Something like that could be believable, but 
it's on our shirt and we don't want that. So the first thing I wanna do is get this to be stuck on the background. I want it to stay over her shirt so that when we move and reveal more of the background, it stays there. To do this, I will go to our tracker. I will hit interactive mode and just draw over her and click delete. So now there's no tracking points on her. It's only gonna take into consideration this tracking data and not track on her shirt at all. And then we'll worry about removing this part in a minute. So we'll go forward and then I'll go back and just see what this looks like. That's fine for this. Only a couple seconds would be used. And that's why in like fast, faster paced commercials where the shots are only on screen for a second or two or three, you can utilize power windows because you're only tracking a low amount of frames and there's not enough time for somebody to stare at the frame and analyze it. So I'm not saying to have mistakes, but it's okay if not everything is perfect because you're trying to create a feeling. With this, it's like focus the light around the person, around the talent, and create some pings of light in the background. We're only gonna see the shot for a second, so we, from one shot to the next, we feel the feeling, but we're not just staring at it like it's a photograph. So it allows me to keep something like this, even though it's moving around a tiny bit, I'm okay with it. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get it off of her in the same node, go back to the power window, and we're gonna draw an area around her shirt and it doesn't need to be perfect. Hit mask. So now this does not go over her shirt and we will track this one. I can hit forward and back, but I like to just see what's happening. So I'm just gonna hit forward and see what happens. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna go back to where we were and I'm gonna go back and that looks pretty good to me. So now we have this shot. Well, let's see. So I have this where it went out of here. So all I'm gonna do is just add another power window by just clicking plus. So now I have another window that I can draw and I'm just gonna draw it around here and I'm gonna make it a mask. The track on this doesn't matter because it's just saying don't let what happened here happen under here. So it can be loose and I'll just track it forward and just make sure it covers that the whole time. So there's no moment in time that our rectangle is over her body, not underneath a mask. And then we can see that light on the back wall, which is moving a tiny bit, but if you look at her, I can't really see it. I'll make a new version and I'll just bring this like all the way over here and then go to the tracker, interactive mode, select these, delete them, track this forward and back. That looks pretty on, keeps the same tracking data and we can just move it back to where we want it. Let's hit the fruit, track it forward and back. And then to see how your track did, sometimes I do this. Seems pretty on, but if it was not on, you could go into the tracker, hit frame. Let's say it started messing up right here. Hit a keyframe here, camera shook or something, so you can just put it back to where it needed to be. Let's say the fruit moved over there, and then you, ha you still have your tracking data, but it moves to over here, and then from there, you can track forward, and let's say something happened again. You could hit frame, keyframe, move it one frame, and then go here, and then continue the track. When there's small little issues in the tracking, you can tune it as you need to. I'm gonna grab the power window. I'm going to draw it, and it's like sunlight hitting this, and then only in the back, maybe like that. For this one, I'll map the HDR wheel, and I'll turn this off. And I just want something around there, feather it out. That looks pretty real to me, actually. Obviously, our only issue is that it's hitting her. We don't want that. First, we will track this power window. Only want it to track to the background, so I'll go to interactive mode, select everything around her, highlight it, and then remove it, and hit go. And I just want to see what this looks like. So it's pretty spot on. It really does look real. Now we need to get it off of 
her, which is as simple as just drawing a mask around her. So in the same node, I'm going to go back here and add another pen. We don't need to draw around here because the shape isn't going there. So we'll start here and I'll just get it a little bit rough and it's okay if it goes into it a little bit. There's light happening all over in here. So it's okay if there's like a little bright edge around her, you know? Maybe something like this. And then I will mask that, see what that looks like. So it's showing up behind her, but we can see we just need to soften this out. And I will soften this, I'll turn this off. Soften this, this, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, let's turn that off for now. I either didn't notice this before, or I'm just noticing this right now, but I'll turn it off for now. So this looks really good to me actually, and it's okay that this is happening. If we didn't want that much on here, we could just kind of pull this out. And we can track. And let's just see what happens. So if I'm looking at her in the water, I'm not really noticing this, but I do notice it. So what I would do here is potentially... Also remember, everything outside of this triangle is fine. So the fact that this messes up right here doesn't matter because nothing's happening there. I'm going to try to just add one more and just draw it around this. And I'm going to go a little bit outside of it and see what happens there. Let's just track and see what happens. So that seems like a much better track. And in here, remember, this will be a mask. And I will fix up this frame. Step forward, that looks pretty good. And then in here, turn this off, soften the outside a little bit. And that looks pretty good. There's a little bit still there, but we're staring at it, paused and on, on repeat, and we've looked at this for a long time, but while recording this YouTube video, getting it to be a fairly close spot where we have this back here is pretty crazy to just be able to add that light. If you watched the last video that I posted, I mentioned how the first look that I had had a slash of light like this in the back, but I utilized that light source to do something else and now I have that back fairly quickly doing this while making a YouTube video. That is pretty cool. Okay, I think that's it for the power windows. Peace.